Because for some reason you can't roll the window down. I saw you roll it up. I'm gonna I don't answer questions. Question. I don't answer questions. You don't answer questions. That's correct. What's the reason for that? I don't answer questions. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Are you? Do you know this lady back here in the accident? Or I don't answer questions. Okay. Well, have a nice day, sir. All right. Thank you. Can I help you? Me, sir. Are you Kenneth Suter? There is one. I don't answer questions. Can I help you? I was looking for a Kenneth Suter. I, I, I don't answer questions. I don't answer questions. Pronounce your last name for me. I don't answer questions. I'm going to need you to pronounce your last name. I don't answer questions. It's there on the license. Okay. Who was the gentleman who was just standing here? I don't answer questions. Is there a reason why? I don't answer questions. Okay. Do you have a nice day? Okay. You too. Can you give me your phone number? I don't answer questions. Okay, is there anybody here that can answer questions? Don't answer questions. Okay. I'm not sure how to respond to that, sir. Sorry. Okay. Have a nice evening. Okay, I'll be back. I'm not the operator in this vehicle, so if you, op if you do that, all right. I'm not the, I'm not, I'm not the operation in this vehicle. Are you going to open the door? Why do you say somebody's not going to hurt you? People are getting shot by the police. Oh, oh. What's your badge number, sir? What's your name, sir? Right there, Danish. F Danish. What's your name, sir? Oh, sh oh, shit. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Damn. What the Get out of the car. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Put your hands. Put your hands what the fuck? Thing. Put them on the thing. Put them right there. Put them right there. Oh. Keep it right there, I'll fucking, I'll put a rod in your ass real quick. What? What did I do? <laughs> Hands on the thing. The police killing of one unarmed teenager in Missouri has struck a nerve with tens of thousands of people across the country. Justice for Michael! Justice for Michael. For many, Michael Brown's death symbolizes a tragic trend of racially charged police violence in America. Unfortunately, when law enforcement uses excessive force and kills um, people that are really no threat to their life, it's usually black men and it's usually white cops. So it's about race, excessive force, it's about class, it's about poverty. And it's about really what we have suffered as a people in the United States of America for 400 years. Brown is at least the fifth unarmed black man to be killed by police within a month. From New York to Ohio to California, these fathers and sons have lost their lives at the hands of law enforcement. When these incidents like the Michael Brown case get reported, um, you know, it brings light to the issue, which uh, I believe is goes across the country. We like to believe that as a society, um, you know, we've advanced and, and it doesn't go on, but it does go on in these cases in, in police departments all across the country. James Shottle's client, Henry Davis, was mistakenly arrested by Ferguson police in 2009. He was allegedly beaten by cops and then charged for property damage because he bled on their uniforms. Nobody was held accountable. Mr. Davis, he was beat, punched, kicked. Uh, he wasn't shot and killed, but he was wounded, had an injury. Um, and I find that it's the police departments that don't police themselves very well. The August 9th killing of an unarmed teenager was not an isolated event in American policing. Between 2005 and 2012, a white officer killed a black person nearly twice a week. That's according to the FBI. 
A vigil has been created in the exact location where Michael Brown was fatally shot. Despite the boiling temperatures, dozens of people are still out here paying their respects. Some have traveled from as far as Tennessee and Chicago because they say that what happened to Michael Brown could have easily happened to them. I've been Mike Brown. I've been in situations before where, uh, you know, in, in Chicago, where, you know, harassed by the police. This isn't necessarily an isolated issue. It happens a lot. I didn't got kicked out of white clubs randomly, harassed by police officers randomly. It's, it's an ongoing thing. Like us black men, we didn't got so used to it. It's almost like the norm, you know. We don't even think about it as much as we do because it happens so often. And so often, a public that's gotten used to racial profiling sees accountability swept under the rug. And that's why justice for Michael Brown's death is about more than just one person. Marina Portnaya, RT, Ferguson. The UN Committee Against Torture has urged the United States to fully investigate and prosecute police brutality and the shootings of minorities, especially black youths, and ensure that taser weapons are used only in life-threatening situations. We have uh, reports of uh, widespread excessive use of uh, force by the police, and uh, this gives rise to concern, of course, uh, and also that some of uh, some vulnerable groups, including uh, uh, Ethnic groups, blacks, uh, have been particularly targeted uh, by this uh, force. And uh, for this reason, the committee feels that there's a need for uh, investigation and prosecution of uh, all cases of uh, uh, police brutality and excessive use of force. The panel's first review of the United States' record on preventing torture since 2006 came in the wake of racially charged unrest in cities across the country this week. And this was sparked by a grand jury's decision not to charge a white police officer for the fatal shooting of an unarmed black teenager in Ferguson, Missouri. The review also expressed deep concern regarding racial profiling and the militarization of police work. The U.S. delegation told 10 independent experts on the panel that 20 investigations had been opened since 2009 into systemic police abuse and that more than 330 police officers had been prosecuted or persecuted prosecuted for brutality. However, the U.N. Committee Against Torture pointed out that there is still not enough information available on the results of those investigations. Well, a growing number of Western countries are joining the United States and Israel in boycotting the United Nations World Conference on Racism, which opened today in Geneva, Switzerland. Australia, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and New Zealand all announced they would boycott the conference soon after the U.S. announced it formally decided not to attend on Saturday. Israel and Canada, or Israel said Canada, had decided to shun the conference many months earlier. France and the U.K. are attending, but France says it will walk out immediately if there are racist comments made against Israel. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon told the opening session he was profoundly disappointed at the boycotts. As the conference began, Israel said it was recalling its ambassador to Switzerland. The protests came as the Swiss president met the Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who is to a address the UN conference later today. The meeting's a follow-up to the first world conference to discuss racism, which was held in Durban, South Africa in August of 2001, and is meant to review progress that's been made in light against uh, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and intolerance. President Obama defended the boycott decision at a news conference in Trinidad on Sunday, citing concerns over adopting language from the 2001 final document and its expressions of, quote, antagonistic uh, antagonism toward Israel. He said participating in the conference, quote, would have involved putting our imprimatur on something we just don't believe. 